Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church, and I'm happy to be with you today. Here it is, the last day of the week, and the last time that I'll talk about events in the early life of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew. And today I'd like to read one, of, one story for you from Matthew chapter 9, and beginning with verse 27. After Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were opened, and they could see. Well, this is a, an amazing story. Early in the ministry of Jesus, before he, I don't want to say went public, but before the big crowds came, and before lots of other things happened, Jesus, for some reason, there's a, a whole bunch of theological explanations for it that I won't go into here, but Jesus, for some reason, worked sort of in the quiet area of the, of the region at the, at the beginning. He, he, he did his ministry, but he didn't want to make, he didn't want to get fame. He didn't want to have huge crowds. You know, so many people today love fame, and they just love the attention that it gets. Well, there's no indication that Jesus ever thought that way. And so it says here, while he's walking down the road, and as I said before, Jesus did a lot of that. He just walked among people and noticed needs and things happened. And it says here, while he was doing that, two blind men followed him. Now, my first interest gets peaked here when when it says two blind men followed him, you think about how did blind men follow him? Well, you think about it. I, I, I'm not sure on that. There must have been somebody to help him along. I mean, how did they know which turn he was taking? I don't know. But then it gets even, even more interesting because it says, and they followed him right into the house where he was staying. How did they know to do that? Well, <laughs> as I told someone a long time ago, there are a lot of things that I don't understand about the Bible. And I still don't. And this particular question at hand here, how did they follow him? I don't know. But the point is they did. They followed him because they wanted to see. Now, I can't blame them for that. Uh, when I've been sick, I want to get well. When I've been stressed, I want to have some peace. When problems happen, I want to get them fixed. And, and I suspect most people do. I think that's just being human. And these two guys were just being human. And even worse, in those days, if you couldn't see, there wasn't any disability act or help for people who, who had difficulties at this or that. I mean, they, they, their lives were really miserable. Some of us think our lives are, but you'd be a blind person back in Jesus' day. Everything is difficult. So these two guys, apparently here he's coming along, and they shout at him, Son of David, have mercy on us. Now, Son of David refers to the coming Messiah, the coming King, the coming Christ, the one who is going to right all the wrongs of the world and bring about a peace and a, as the Bible calls it, a shalom, a, a togetherness that's, that never happened except in the very beginning in the garden. And so they follow Jesus, and he stops them, and he says, Do you believe I can make you see again? Well, here's the first step. They have to believe. 
Now, they said, yes, we do. But maybe you're at a point in your life where something's going on, and you can't say that. You can only say, I hope so. Maybe your struggles are so great in life that they overwhelm you. And, and that's understandable. We're human beings. You and I are not totally in charge of everything. We may not be totally in charge of anything, actually. But here the two guys said, yes, we believe that. And then Jesus said, okay, because of your faith, it'll happen. And he touched their eyes and they were opened and, and they saw. Now, I'd like to tell you, some preachers might, I'd like to tell you that this is the formula to get healed every time. Come to Jesus in faith, let him touch you, and you're going to be all right. And I do think that's the formula. But I don't know that everybody gets healed all the time. I guess in my life, I don't know. I've seen a lot of healings. I've seen a lot of miracles. I've seen a lot of things that just don't make sense unless God's doing it. But that's not true for everything. And I've prayed a lot of times and didn't seem to get the answer I was looking for. And see, that's the key. When we come to God with faith, we are saying we trust him and we trust his judgment. And if we're going to trust his judgment, we have to trust what he does, his actions, even if we don't understand them. The power of this story isn't that if you just have enough faith, you'll get healed. Maybe so. Hasn't worked that way for me. It's worked for some, but not all. And maybe it works that way for you. But I do know that asking God for help in my particular situation, always, always, without doubt, makes a difference. And, and so I want to encourage you today, if you're blind, I don't mean physically, if you're struggling, then do what these two guys did. Get to Jesus. Bust down the door where he's staying if you have to. Don't, don't be timid. These guys were not timid. They knew what they wanted, and they went after Jesus. They were determined to get an audience. And, and what they didn't understand is that he wants to give us an audience. So if, if you're in somewhere in your life and, and things aren't quite the way they, I won't say should be, but the way you want them to be, then get yourself close to Jesus. Be bold. Tell him what you want. And trust him. You never know what's going to happen. But I know this. Whatever happens, it's always better than if you don't do this. Well, give it a thought. Here we are at the end of the week, I say. Have a great weekend. If you have a concern or a prayer need, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. Thank you so much for listening. Have a glorious weekend. And I'll be back Monday with some other thoughts. Take care.